Hey guys, Darcy here, and today we're going to talk about do you buy the M1 or M1 Pro for music production? Let's get into it. First thing out of the gate, I've had my M1 Pro, MacBook Pro, for 60 days. And the question you're going to ask is, do I love it? Do I hate it? Am I going to return it like some people are doing? Love it, not returning it. This thing is staying with me. The thing you really want to know, which chip do you buy? We're going to get to that at the very end of this video because there's a few things we have to go over first that lead into making that decision. Well, before this, I had a 2012 iMac fully upgraded with a SSD hard drive put into it, 32 gigs of RAM, and that thing was clocking out at 100% cpu usage all the time it just wasn't doing it and it's 2012 and this thing is blowing that out the water all that positive aside of course you want to know plug-in compatibility that's what every producer every recording mixing engineer you got to know this so i can't speak for every plugin out there what i use a lot of universal audio plugins alliance sound toys a little bit of isotope not a big native instruments person but i do use battery and that has worked for the plugins for like 70 80 percent has worked for me with a caveat when i run it in logic pro which i've used because i came from logic pro in the past so i own a copy sound toys like the whole suite doesn't work one isotope one plugin alliance uh, a couple smaller names they they d are not working and i'm running logic in well uh native apple mode so i believe it's coming down to that it's running natively but those plugins are not supported so when logic runs its its audio unit test they don't pass and it decides to not run them if i ran it in rosetta i'm sure it would work i just haven't got around to it because logic is not my main driver luna however is running in Rosetta mode, and so everything I mentioned has worked for me, including Native Instruments battery. Now, has that really affected my performance? No. Uh, my performance is, is fantastic. We'll get into that in the last segment of M1 versus M1 Pro. If it gets better, fantastic, because it's already great. Now, some people, you know, because I talk a lot about Luna and I know a lot about it, when is it going to get that native compatibility? I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't work at Universal Audio. Let's get into talking about choosing an M1 computer. Before we talk about the chip, let's first talk about the easy part. The solid state hard drive that comes with this thing and the RAM. The solid state hard drive on this is ridiculously fast. So my write speeds go on the low end of two gigabytes per second to five gigabytes per second. My read speeds stay at about five gigabytes per second. It's just ridiculous. And so that contributes to my RAM usage being much lower because RAM is usually to store for quick access memory for things that, you know, to give to the CPU. But with it processing it so fast and this architecture of the chip where everything's in one place and so it doesn't have to travel as far on, on your logic board of the computer and they don't all have to have their own little memories and stuff like that. It means that it's getting that information, processing it really quickly and being done with it where a different architecture would have to take that information, store it, process it, and then clear its storage and do a whole bunch of stuff in a way that's just slower than this setup. So that does mean that if you were on a budget crunch, you could save on your RAM. Now I got 32 gigs of RAM and one terabyte because I'm just a person who wants more headroom. I didn't want to shoot low and then realize I need something later. But right now my RAM usage is like 15% in Luna when I'm running a session. It's so low that I've had to like lean in to see where the meter was at. It's ridiculous. If you wanted to save money, get 16 gigs of RAM and a bigger SSD uh, to the biggest as you, you can. But let's get into it. Let's, let's talk about the thing you really wanna know, the CPU part of it, the M1 or the M1 Pro. First off, let's look at the architecture of the chips. They have two types of cores an efficiency core and a performance core. The efficiency core is like Chrome, right? You know, I'm assuming Keynote would be in that, that realm. Lower efficiency products, where your high performance is your Final Cuts, your Lunas, your Logics, your Pro Tools, your all of that high performance stuff, right? When you look at the two chips, you see, oh, M1's got eight cores. 
When you look at M1 Pro, it's got 10 cores. Well, I know the, the price difference. Let me go for those eight cores, except take those efficiency cores and wipe them out because you're not using them when you're using Luna, when you're using Pro Tools. So now you're looking at four performance cores in the M1 and eight performance cores in the M1 Pro or the M1 Max. That's double. That's double the resources. When you look at one of my sessions that I have open here, what you see is that this is a typical session, 50 tracks, and I'm sitting at about 40% usage. And a lot of other songs I've seen when I'm mixing right now are 30% and sometimes sub. CPU usage is what's basically using your AU plugins in Luna. All of your, your fab filter, your isotope, your sound toys, as well as Luna extensions like API Vision Console, the tape saturation, um, the summing, all that CPU. And I use a lot of summing, a lot of API Vision Console to the point now that like, I just don't even think about it. I just slap it on everything like Frank's Red Hot Sauce. I'm running at 40%. My assumption is a MacBook Air M1 would be closer to 80%. Maybe it's, it doesn't scale like that. Maybe it's 65, 70, but you're gonna use more or have less to use when a session gets bigger. You know, I'm assuming the software is smart and as you add more, it tries to be efficient and tries to find ways to save on resources. But overall, it's, uh, it's half the amount. And so that's likely gonna be half the plugins or a portion less of the tracks or half the virtual instruments. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're working in something more professional, something to that degree where you wanna show up, people are paying and you don't want to all of a sudden realize very early on you're running out of resources, go with the M1 Pro, get at least 16 gigs of RAM. If you're me, get 32 and at least a terabyte of hard drive. If you're a more hobbyist, amateur, uh, you know, starting out, fine macbook air mac mini i mean i wouldn't really get the macbook pro in the middle it's kind of weird but it's up to you you know really what it's coming down to with these cores is how many performance cores do you need scale that up use my my numbers as a uh, as a way of thinking yeah i hope that you found this helpful i hope this gives you perspective on where to go with the m1 and the m1 pro if it did let me know that if there's still more questions you have because i'm sure i missed something let me know that as well in the comments and otherwise have yourself a great day and peace.